the new ProLite workbench from Durston Tools boasts all the same features as their professional workbench, but being laminated plywood, it brings the cost down considerably. I think less than half price. So let's get this box open. Let's put the workbench together and I shall show you the features. Inside, we have the instructions. As you can see, there are quite a few parts to put together. And Durston states that this bench can be put together in round about an hour. Okay, so that is everything unpacked. You can see that everything comes with letters A, C. On these here, we've got uh, O's, those aren't lettered, uh, N's, L's, all letters of the alphabet, and they relate now to the assembly instructions. We've got four sets of slide in drawer mechanisms, a bag of wooden dowels and also door handles, a bag of an awful lot of bits and pieces, and another bag full of screws and nuts and washers. I recommend laying all of these items out and you know them exactly what you've got, the quantities, and you know exactly what piece is what. So then when you start then with the assembly instructions, you can go through it and work out exactly what is what. We start off with the drawers first. The three drawers, that's to the right hand side, they have the little knobs on. The other drawer then is the pull out tray. And then we start putting together the main body of the workbench. So let's get started. So there are a couple of pieces that do not have, or well they do, that do not have actual labels on. So your best bet is to lay them out to make sure that all the right pieces belong with the drawers, especially the drawers. We've got lots of these. These are the fittings for the drawer, and I'm sure they're the same fittings that we're gonna have for a lot of the other parts as well. And there's a little white end here that is slightly ribbed, and this blue plastic coated screw screws into that. And with the, the sides, there are some small holes here. Don't confuse them with the larger holes that go on the back, okay? So these little white fittings will fit nicely into the smaller of the holes, just like that there. And what we need to do is to screw those down nice and tight. And as they screw down, they'll expand the white plugs into the wood, which then stops these from pulling straight the way out. Okay, so they screw in nice and tight. Just have a double check. Lovely, like that. And make sure that you screw these in really, really well, as far in as you can manage it, because these have to go nice and deep. If they're not in deep enough, when you come to fasten the backs and the fronts on, they will wobble. So you've got to make sure that these do go down nice and deep into the white areas there. Then I've got one in there already. You can put these together. So these little black little plugs will go in just like that there. And we can turn these clockwise, lock them into place, and that will hold there we go, that one corner nice and sturdy in place, just like that there. And now we can carry on constructing the rest of the drawers. And now with the pull-out tray nearly complete, I just want to bring your attention to a couple of little points here. Uh, you've got these holes and the fittings to fasten the sides on. Make sure they are towards the back. Okay, so this is the front, so they are on the back. And then also to the little shelf here, make sure again those fittings are towards the bottom. So viewed from the front, you don't see any fittings at all. 
The drawer that goes with this has got uh, three holes. So it's got one, two, three holes, and it's got two blind holes on either side. Don't forget, again, the runners should go on and the little rolls here should always be towards the back. And they are actually numbered, sorry, lettered. This is D, uh, DR, so this is draw right, and that would be draw left, D for draw. Very good. So these will go on in this angle there, and this one will go on just like that. Now you've also got two blind holes in the bottom here. Again, that is to tell you which holes to use for the runners that we've got here. So in addition to the one, two, three, that's just holding the base to the sides, you've also then got these longer screws that came with uh, your kit. And these now will be able to screw through to hold these through the bottom into the sides. I'm putting together the top, put it upside down here, and one of the rails has this little cutout, as you can see. That is going to be for the bench peg, so that has to be located where your semicircle is here. And also, going back to exactly what I said earlier, all the fittings are going to be away from view. So this is where we put those little black plugs. That will go into place there, that will go into place there, and that will go down as well, just like that there. And now this is then, you can see, where the bench peg goes. And we put in those plugs and we tighten them up. So with the rail in place, I'm just doing one of the sides uh, of the drawers. Now, pay attention to this because you could easily get this wrong now because it's not obvious from where these rails, these draw rails go. You need to get the ones that says CL. That's gonna be the carcass on the left, okay? So these now will go onto this side piece with this little cutout. On the one side, again, we've got these three blind holes and three blind holes here. And now these have to go onto the sides. Now, being there's lots of holes on the runners, we need to decide on where they need to go because they can go together in a few different places. So what you want to do is we've got the roller here. You want to come down to the second hole. The second hole lines up with the blind hole there. And then this blind hole here lines up with the second hole in from the bottom. So that one needs to be screwed onto there. That one needs to be screwed onto there. And likewise, that one needs to be screwed onto there. So it's the second hole in from the roller, second hole in from the back. And we fasten them into the place with the small 16 millimeter screws. All right, so I've got one side on. It's time to put the other side on. You must remember to put in the dowels into the holes that are blind. So not into these holes down here, because you can see we have the little hole here. So put the dowels into the blind side and offer up the side. Now, I've also got the back strut as well because that has to go on at the same time so these should then just tap into position this back strut will go on the back of the legs again we've got little blind holes here that we've put the dowels in we locate them in to the back again make it look nice so from the front we don't see any fittings that's going to go together just right And to put the sides on, we use these long bolts along with these little round nuts. And the idea is you have a washer 
the washer goes on first like that that'll go through the top and then on this side here you put in the little round nut make sure the slot is facing towards you and put that in so that now the slot is horizontal and then that should be able to screw in and that will locate into the nut we get our screwdriver wherever my screwdriver is appeared to there it is there and we screw that in and we do that to one two three four five six sides here and then also onto the bottom and okay so it's virtually all ready we've just got these little side struts that we need to put into place on the side and they line up with the edge of the back here and make sure now that is nice and straight and we use the remaining 20 millimeter screws to screw them through from this side. So with the workbench pretty much complete, all we need to do now is to put the drawers in place. Don't forget you've got one deep drawer, two shallow drawers. So the deep drawer goes upon the top like that there. And then we've got the two shallower drawers go on there. Beautiful, just like that there. Then we've also got your little pull out shelf as well. That will go on nice and easily, just like that there. And don't forget your little pull out tray as well. Don't forget we've got the fittings on the back that goes towards the back and on the front, a nice plain front like that. And don't forget, we also need our bench peg as well. And that can go into the front like that. The one thing that I think I would add is to just to drill a little pilot hole through this member here, this cross brace, to be able to screw that bench peg nice and secure. It's pretty much secure now, but I really want my bench peg nice and secure. I know people do like to turn their bench pegs over if they're doing some sawing and so forth, but I think just drilling a small hole and putting a screw through just to hold that bench peg in place would be absolutely ideal. And also, this pull-out tray here has a lovely green base to it. If you're going to be using that pull-out tray to catch your lemel, your filings from your sawing and your filing on your bench plate, I think I would get a small little baking tray that we can fit into the bottom of here to catch all that lemel. You don't want to go losing any of those filings, any of your lemel, because you can save it up send it off to your precious metal reclamation specialist. But a nice little tray to go in here would be ideal to catch all those, and that way it won't spoil the gorgeous green base. So all in all, I think it is an absolutely brilliant workbench for the price. It is heavy, it is sturdy, it is solid. It is a veneer upon plywood. So in fact, I think I have marked it in a couple of places where I've lent it against uh, the drawers that were lying down here. So do take care with it, look after it, but as it's a workbench, it's gonna get dented, it's gonna get marked, and if like me, it's gonna get burnt. But do take care of it, it will last you an absolute lifetime. I think it really is a great workbench. The Pro Light Workbench from Durston Tools. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.